The atmosphere seems to stifle my breathing. Wow. Been through the pages of my old journals with every turn another memory. Hello and welcome to episode 79 of Journaling Through the Years. I am Leah Liz and this is a series on this channel wherein I read from my journals that I've been old that I've been writing in since I was old enough to hold a pen or a pencil and we are in this journal which was the sophomore through like summer between sophomore year of high school and junior year of high school um, we've had content warning because there was a lot of um, I was going through some depression, my first real depression and suicidal ideation break. Um, this entry, pretty tame, so I'm not going to really worry about that. I'll let you know beforehand if there's anything triggering coming up, but this pretty tame. Uh, it, the links to all the merch that I've talked about, the t-shirts, the bonfire are below, the Patreon and the website as well if you want to learn more about Cafe Girl thriving artists. So let's begin. It does not say the date when I wrote this. It just says, local girl makes good. And then it begins. I sit in the plastic chair and watch the TV flash its colors. Like that. That's good. It's a good image. I hardly can move in the small room. Wow, this poor person. The atmosphere seems to stifle my breathing. Wow. A, this is like a really vivid though. You get the idea of like being in a room, like we've all been in a room, like plastic chairs and this TV and it's really hot. And you're like, I can't breathe. Um, the atmosphere seems to stifle my breathing. It is hot and humid. Sweat clings to my brow and pours out my pores, pours out my pores, <laughs> down my neck. I mean, this is very like descriptive, very good writing. I, I'm really seeing, I don't know where I was when I was writing this, but I can under, I can see myself. <laughs> I can, you know, I think anyone who's hearing this can hear and relate to wherever this person was. My hair sticks to my head as I try to click it, clip it up. It's like so sticky that it's just like, ah, I can't get it. God, I think. Will, and I wrote wheel, like W-E apostrophe L-L, but I meant well. Well, or will, will this madness ever end? No question mark, just will this madness ever end? My thoughts racing hurriedly through my mind are confusing wait my thoughts racing hurriedly through my mind are confusing and scary oh i cannot make seem to make sense of the thousands of pointless questions asked to me during the days of my life okay so racing thoughts is sometimes something like a symbol a symptom of bipolar it could also be a symptom of depression um anxiety and so it seems like wherever I was I was probably in some kind of waiting room but I might have been just really tired from school or from I don't know if I'd started school this time I think it was still summer um just from life and a little just overwhelmed as any a 15 16 year old would be but at the same time someone who had been now starting to deal with mental health issues but not a lot of resource to make sense of it and to try to connect with others or to talk about it and so here I was just writing in my journal and you know trying to see if anyone would hear or that if I could make sense of my own head it's just those racing thoughts running through my head and also I was in a place a room that was probably very physically hot and I know when I get hot, I can get very uncomfortable, very moody, very tired and need water and all that thing. So I was probably really just tired and bored and hot and just had a lot going on. I, it was probably summer. So the people that had caused the break or had been there when I had had my break, my suicidal depression break, the boyfriend and broke up with me and the best friend that dated him and then the other one that ran away, they were gone but they're still the remnants from it were in my head 
and I was still dealing with that and trying to get better without a lot of real support other than just take your pills. Um, and so cheers to me that I've lasted this long shows my strength that I had to do it basically on my own. Um, I think that, uh, I think, I mean, yeah, basically on my own, I had to make my way and try to make sense of it because I didn't feel at this time that I could really tell anyone what was going on because I just had to, you know, buck up and keep going and, and pretend like it hadn't, hadn't happened or just move on. You're better now. So move on. But the thing is, is if you don't look at something and work through it and really work through it and deal with it and, and kind of look at your issues and heal from them, it'll just kind of be another layer, another layer, another layer, 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 layer. And then you're up here and it's a shaky, everything is shaky. One little thing can cause everything to break down. And then here you are again. Um, and so I should have been able to start working. I wish I had really the tools then or with people around me to help me really work on myself and what I needed then so that instead of just taking a pill, you know, therapy and whatnot, so that I didn't have to layer upon layer upon layer of depression and fear and anxiety and betrayal and trauma and all the way <laughs> until, you know, until I was 27 and then still more to come that I finally had to admit. I mean, at least at 27, that was still relatively young that I could start to piece it all together and release all of that and start making my own way. But, um, but that just, I think that to me shows the importance of a community that is willing to listen and to be there for you. And then the right, and to help you find the right resources you need beyond just medication. I'm not against the medication. I'm not against Western medicine, but I think we need more than that. Just like I think that we need, sometimes we need more than therapy. Just be your own advocate for your own health, whether that's mental or physical. And oftentimes it all works together. I mean, mental, physical health can cause mental issues, mental illness, mental illness can cause physical, can, you know, I, if, um, aggravate uh, men, physical issues. So just be your own advocate and find your community, find your tribe. And that's why I have the um, Recovery is Sexy um, t-shirt kind of merchandise that is a uh, fundraiser for NAMI, uh, specifically my NAMI, NAMI Southern Oregon, but is just NAMI in general. So it, for me, my community has been from a person with mental illness has been NAMI, just NAMI, National Alliance on Mental Illness. When I was in California, I belonged to a chapter down there and then as well here that I've done work for because it's that's like a foundation and then from there I can connect with other people and, and gain, um, kind of get advice on where to go. I also have a therapist and a psychiatrist, but just in general, when you're, well, find your community that can help you in a healthy community, healthy relationships that can help you get to, to get better, to move forward in life. And that's what we're going to do for this week. So before we go, you can say it with me. Remember always that you matter, your life matters, you are loved and you are worthy of love. And always remember to love your thrive and find your sunshine.